close our session, uh, we have Manolis Mavrikis from uh, uh, University College of London. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm going to talk about the design and valuation of teacher assistant tools for exploratory learning environments. I'll explain a little bit more what um, our context is and so on in a minute. But uh, before, just to introduce also uh, Sergio Gutierrez Santos that is uh, in the room and Alex, um, she's also in the room. So you've got their pictures there and you can ask them also questions afterwards. Um, but because I'll forget at the end and I'll run out of time, uh, like not <laughs> people now. Um, and um, this is work that was funded in a, in a project called MyGen that developed the expressive environment and was funded by the UK funding body uh, from ESRC and PSRC, and has also continued in the context of a European project, AMC Square. Um, and these are two other colleagues that have helped both in the evaluation that you will see here and further development of these tools, and they're also in the conference. So before going into the detail of what um, these tools are and how are they helping um, teachers, I'd like to present a little bit more about the context that we are working on, which is exploratory learning environments. Some of you were in the previous talk um, an hour ago or so, um, so apologies that if it's a little bit repetitive, but um, in exploratory learning environments, the we are concerned with highly interactive tools where the students are not just answering a very structured question that expects one answer, but they're interacting in a more complex environment. And in our particular case, in this one, talking about the expressive micro world, where students are building patterns like the ones that you see here, and they find, um, express, they find rules that underline these patterns, uh, expressions that describe the number of tiles that um, are needed to, to build those. I'll show in a minute how they're interacting with this tool, but these are possible different patterns, for example, you can imagine, um, and the different answers. So the pattern is the same, but the actual answers that you are having in terms of how you are, um, how you describe the number of tiles in the pattern are different, like five times reds plus three, or three times five reds, and so on. The reason I'm saying this, and I'm trying to demonstrate the um, the difference compared to a system where you have just a unique answer. Uh, so just very briefly, if that works, um, a, a short video, the, the sound is not important, but basically these are the type of um, activities that students get on paper. And in this particular context, this is quite important um, modification to be able to do this on a, on a, on a digital uh, environment because otherwise it's, it's very static and actually the whole question and the notion behind um, a, a variable doesn't become live on a, on, a, on a textbook. So we designed this environment that uh, allows the, the, the students to, to explore this. You'll see how it's uh, animated and quite dynamic and there's several things happening on the, on the screen. Um, here, for example. There are many things that the students have to um, drop in the canvas and so on, and a teacher who is uh, working around and trying to help them. So, um, and this brings us to the problem that we have in this context, which is basically that we'd like to support the teacher being able to support the, the, the students, because they, in especially in exploratory in learning environments, they have been shown to be effective, especially for conceptual knowledge, but um, a teacher needs to ensure like a productive interaction with the environment, otherwise students can get lost and so on. And this is applicable in other contexts as well, where you have more exploratory um, learning going on. So here is a student trying to do something and a teacher pointing to the screen and, and helping her. So uh, from one point of view, we develop tools within the environment that help the student directly, like they provide feedback and so on, and we have presented this work elsewhere. Um, but as I said, our goal is to support the teacher to have awareness and control of the, of the classroom, which is quite challenging in a, in, a, in a real context. And I saw earlier 
lot of you are teachers and you know this better than me, but this is a, a classroom uh, here in, uh, well, in London, where um, students are interacting with the system in different computers, and this is the teacher walking around and trying to help them. And um, there's a video, but we couldn't show it now. The, the teacher uh, a minute ago was with this student, helping her undertake the task. And the minute he walked out, I don't know if you can see from back there, from, from the pattern, maybe you can see that she's doing something completely different. <laughs> she went on Facebook or something. So, and the, and the teacher now is helping another student. So, um, it's a common challenge nowadays in uh, learning analytics to try to design tools that could help the, the teacher. And that was our question as well. How, ca how can we design these tools to, to support the teacher? So, by way of uh, uh, outlining the rest of the talk and um, summarizing some of the key points that uh, I'll go through. They, I'll describe the tools in a minute, but I will not focus so much on the tools because our interest is on the evaluation methodology that, that uh, we followed. And uh, so I'll, I'll describe how we, we reached some usage scenarios for, for these tools and the importance of the in situ experience of, of the teachers when we derive these uh, usage scenarios, as well as the real time access to, to analytics that they were requiring. And then I'll focus on the, I'll focus on the evaluation that we designed that we refer to as a poor, poor man's ev evaluation the techniques because we're trying to get away from um, the expensive and difficult evaluation in the context of the classroom, but then simultaneously trying to keep the validity of um, of a situation of, of of a lab experiment, for example. So uh, I'll explain that and how and what kind of metrics we are using to to help us gauge our our progress in terms of the development of the tools and the impact that they they are having. So. Uh, our design and evaluation methodology um, is, was uh, as follows. Basically, it's a typical iterative uh, design that try to engage uh, teachers in early stages, Re retrospectively and uh, recently from the last year conference. We try to map it to the Latux methodology that um, Roberto and others have uh, worked on. Um, which, which is shown here, and it mixes software engineering and user experience approaches, but also highlights particularly the fact that we need to derive pedagogical requirements as we go through an iterative cycle. So the, uh, the Latux approach, which resembles very much what we were following, um, has the problem identification stage, low fidelity prototyping, high fidelity prototyping, pilot um, studies and, and classroom use. And depending on the context, the tools you're developing and so on, it expects that you iterate over this. So as a reflection for us, I'll, I'll, I'm mapping the process that we went through um, overlaid on top of the uh, Latux methodology and we can see here the, this first phase in the problem identification, how for us it was really important to elicit requirements from the teachers. But we had a particular challenge that I think it might be uh, specific to this, um, to, the, to this context of exploratory learning in that not only the uh, teachers were asked to interact with tools in a, in a completely new context that they, they didn't have experienced before, but on top of that, we're asking them to use tools that, there are no, that they have no similar concept of and how they can work with those and how can they reflect. So for us, it was really important at the very beginning of, of the process to do this cycle quite um, fast. So we designed not low fidelity prototypes because we couldn't get them in the classroom then, but uh, high fidelity prototypes that focused on particular aspects of the visualizations that you will see. So in early versions, instead of having three or four visualizations, we had one that would help us 
um, go be in the classroom with the teacher and help them start using the tools and reflect on those. So we refer to that as iterative context engineering and um, because we engineer the classroom in a way that would give us uh, feedback on that. So, and we have reported it um, elsewhere. So now I'll focus on the, so out of this we derived specific usage requirements. If you can see here, can I'll let you a minute to read them. I won't go into all of them. And you can see that most of these are uh, requirements that relate to having access to data at real time. And out of those, we designed several tools. One particular, uh, one of them is what we refer to as classroom dynamics. That, again, nowadays is kind of um, a, a popular approach to showing, to using um, these traffic light uh, colors to show student engagement. And so in, the, in this paper in 2012, we saw this different, um, thi this, this classroom dynamic tool that uh, one of the particular interesting aspects for our teachers is that the, these uh, circles represent students that you can move around according to your, to, to your setting in the classroom. So you could put them all um, around tables that you would have here or that you would put them in stacks like this as our ICT classrooms are. In, in our context, it's important for the teacher to be able to access <coughs> the, the model that the student is constructing. So when they click in one of those circles, they're able to see the construction of the student and access more information without necessarily having to interrupt the student to, um, to, to, to check their, their, their progress. So then they can intervene as, as they would like. Uh, another visualization is uh, what we refer to as goal achievement. So we instrumented the environment to be able to have specific goals within a task and the system detects whether the students are achieving those goals and uh, shows them in this visualization as green if they are progressing towards, if they have achieved one of these goals. So every column is one goal, like construct a pattern. <laughs> it always happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no more slides, so I did it on purpose. It's not the test in the middle of the day. <laughs> ah, stop. Well, as I said, I have no more slides, so <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Time's up. Right, so um, as I was saying, this is a goal achievement tool. Every column shows one different um, every column shows one different goal within the task. So you saw the different ways that the, um, the patterns have to be made. So at some point, the students have to construct it, color it, make it uh, mo more general, find the solution, and so on. So th this shows the progress of, of a student. And if they haven't achieved the goal, it's white. If they have achieved it, but maybe deleted something and so on, it's then yellow. Another tool. Uh, was this grouping tool that um, allows teachers to group students together based on the constructions of the patterns. I won't go into detail. We have a, a paper that's coming out soon and Sergio and, I and Alex obviously can take questions on this. I'll go back to the, to the question of how are we going to evaluate, how are we trying to evaluate these tools. And if you remember the Latouk cycle, one particular uh, stage is this validation in the wild. And I agree, and it is a really important stage because how on earth would you otherwise know if the, if the tools are working particularly for, for the teacher in the classroom? So I'll just show again a very quick um, video. I don't know, um, I don't know if you'll be able to hear, but it's a teacher reflecting on 
on the tools having used them in the classroom. Um, So her point was, if you care that, that uh, the tools allow her to see more than uh, what she would be able to see if she's working with one of the students. And that's, that's a common um, goal these days. As she reflected further on, um, she used the term like help seeing the forest for the trees. And I would also say also being able to identify the specific trees and <coughs> them in particular. And having done this in the wild, we were also able to observe other uh, behaviors that we wouldn't be able to notice, like uh, what we are terming as a better behavior than under vigilance effect, because we notice the students um, reflecting differently and working differently with the tools when they knew that the teacher is um, having access to, to th these visualizations. But again, I'll take you back to this uh, Latux um, cycle circling, iterative approach, because our, our interest was also how can we get more viewpoints from teachers in a kind of inexpensive way, because especially in this context, maybe especially in UK, it was really difficult for us to work directly with teachers as if in, a f in a full cycle going in the classroom doing studies that are expensive, but um, in lab conditions, the effect of the tools on teachers doesn't allow us to, it's not easy to investigate that. So we designed a tool that we call this time stop functionality that uses uh, not simulated but collected data from a real classroom session. And we designed sessions with a larger number of teachers in the, in the lab. So we're able to get 13, 15 teachers in the lab and ask them specific questions given the particular data that uh, the system had uh, collected before. This time stop functionality brings a drop down that they, they select within a given period, the time that um, we are wi within a classroom session. And we're able to reflect on the specific usage scenarios on um, on, on their, on, on to, to give us feedback. So um, we designed the sessions where they had an introduction of the tools, they were uh, undertaking a hands-on task with a specific environment, the, the full cycle, like from the beginning, the same way that the students would do. And 10 minutes within the, the classroom interaction, we would give them access to the, to the tools and a demonstration on, on how they work, 30 minutes uh, within the classroom, we would ask them specific questions that they have to um, to answer, like tasks, I'll show in a minute, and five minutes before the end, again, specific questions and reflections on, on the usage of, of the tools. So in a formative state, uh, stage, we had this kind of questions that are like, what can you do without the tools and with the tools? given the, the specific goal that you have, like the teacher's task is finding out which students need your immediate help. So we'll, we'll ask them, what would you do without the tool and what can you do now with the tools given that we gave you access to the tools? And this sort of experience of giving them access to the tools was helping them see what, what is possible and they were, they were able to, re to reflect on those and um, give, a, give us feedback. <laughs> And in terms of metrics of how we can use as a kind of baseline, um, we also designed this questionnaire that gives them specific questions and tasks in different time points. So in 10 minutes into the lesson, we'd ask uh, which students need your help or um, with to, to which student would you intervene? And in 30 minutes on, um, ask, 
what kind of stage the classroom is at. Again, 30 minutes, find, find two students that are disengaged and we, they would have access to the tools to, to do that. And can you give two examples of students who have finished? Of course, we're not so interested in whether they're answering correcting, co correctly, they, they are, and it turned out all of them were finding the answers that uh, were hidden in the data, but we were interested in the perceived time f that it takes them for the task. Because of the real-time nature of the task in the classroom, we want to see the, the perception on, on, on the time it takes, and you can see that most of them are finding it very that it takes very little time. And we can work on aspects that seem to take more time. Another um, um, metric um, is what we term this perceived usefulness. I put it in quotes because it's not exactly usefulness. It's whether they agree on specific statements in terms of how the tools are, are helping them. I'll focus on, on these two that seem to be a little bit problematic and that some more work can be can be done. One is to provide appropriate support and guidance to individual students during the lesson. And the reason is that to some extent they were able to, we were, the, the tools were able to show a specific student that maybe needs help, but they would also welcome <coughs> particular ways that the tool could help them to, to help the student directly rather than them having to engage in the whole interaction and understand how to help. And another one that we were setting, I think, the bar too high, uh, helping them identify common procedural and, um, and conceptual kind of inconsistencies and difficulties that the students are facing. And th that it's, it requires a, a lengthy reflection stage from the teacher to be able to, to do that. So uh, with that in mind, as a summary, the, we developed these usage scenarios that um, uh, it was really important to do them in situ, getting the experience of the, of the teachers as they're working and, and identified particularly the need for real-time access to, to analytics. But in terms of the evaluation, um, I'd like to just reflect and get your feedback as well on this uh, inexpensive evaluation that we were able to do in the, in the lab and how it gave us particular information that in combination with a more um, in situ validation in the wild can, can um, help us reflect on the value, on the added value of the, of the tools, but also get several views that otherwise we wouldn't necessarily have. We would be able to get two, three teachers, but that's all. I will leave the next steps uh, on, the, on the slide and invite any questions that you have. Thanks. Um, not really. I think it, it had to do particularly with the fact that we were, um, that we designed the tools to be accessed on, the, on a tablet and at a glance. Mm -hmm. And I think this, this uh, approach of just looking quickly and also highlighting particular students that need help as far as the system is uh, concerned didn't require a lot of time from them to engage with that. And uh, additionally, in the reflections, um, they said that it modified their behavior in terms of which students they're, they're approaching because they tend to have the favorite <coughs> student even implicitly. But the fact that it was so visible to them to go to a particular student, I think, didn't bring also this negative uh, effect. Yeah. Yeah. You mean from for the visualization for the students, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. for the teachers? The what, what, what is yeah, it's it's uh, quantifying the interaction with the tool, 
where, uh, whether they're progressing with, with what they're doing in the environment. You saw how interactive it is. You need to uh, drag blocks and put them down and create expressions. So every time that there is a, an action in the system, it's logged as an indicator. And that um, in addition with the data on whether this is towards a goal, it, it gets combined to, uh, to, to an indicator of engagement. If they're not working with the tool, if there are no data coming from it, in addition, if there are no data that are demonstrating that they're working towards an objective, then this is characterized as a disengagement. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Manali. Uh, thank you to all the speakers for adhering to our schedule. Uh, you are invited for the Firefox session and the poster session that will take place in the other building. Thank you. Thanks.